Welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on Lockdown Sunday here in Melbourne because uh, let's go across to our friends over in the West and we're heading to the Perth in particular and with the Western Australia Netball League competition came to an end uh, last Friday um, but uh, of course for the Jets in particular they came so so close of uh, making the the grand finals and finals uh, throughout uh, the 2021 season. We've got two very special guests. They're both captains of their respective teams. Um, they're at the Jets and they join us right now. Thanks both for joining us. Hi, Thanks. Hello. Well, I will get both of you to introduce yourselves and tell us what position both of you play on your respective teams at the Jets. Um, I'm Gian. Um, I'm a defender on the under 20 Jets team. And so goal defense and goal keep, sorry. I'm, uh, I'm Cassie and I'm in the Jets League team. Uh, I'm a mid-quarter, mostly play wing attack and sometimes a little bit of centre. Tell us a bit about the season. Um, I'll get to the open one in a moment, but uh, tell us a bit <laughs> about the season. Yeah, so we had a bit of a rough season um, going along. Obviously, we didn't uh, come along with a win in any of our games. But um, I think a lot of us like kept our heads up because the improvement you know, from our first few games to the last few games where it actually came pretty close, like some of them two to three goals. I think we're really happy with, you know, just how far we did come in the season and like becoming such a tight knit group of girls was was definitely a plus for us, um, even though we didn't come away with any wins. Now, Cass, I will get to you about the opens in a moment. I'll stay with the 20s uh, for the 20s for a moment. Uh, you mentioned that, uh, and I wasn't going to mention how many wins you actually won throughout the year uh, so <laughs> in the intro. But, uh, you know, it, I guess, was it was, is this team a fairly young team? Yeah, definitely. So there's, a, um, it's under 20s and we, the oldest player we have is 19. And um, like, it comes from 15, 16, 17 year olds mainly. So yeah, we are a very young team compared to a lot of the Perth teams, which are 19, 20 year olds. And, and I'm sure most of the teams that you've played against this year, would have been almost like top age 20s or yeah, close to 19s definitely. and 20s. Uh, and you've come very close against most of the top teams in the competition. Um, that must be really good signs for the future there at the Jets. Yeah, definitely. If we can like keep the core group going like throughout the next few seasons, like I've still got a few years um, left in under 20s. So definitely if we can keep that group coming up through the season, through the next few seasons, it'll be a big plus and we'll be a lot stronger when, you know, we get a little bit older to up where the other teams are. I'm assuming you would have versed the eventual premiers uh, in the Rangers um, who won yeah. their grand final, well, reasonably easily um, in the grand final against East Frio. Um, yeah. I guess, how did you spare against them throughout the year? I can't remember the exact point, but I do know that, like, um, in the first half of our games against them, we were always like pretty strong and up there. And whether it was just because like we got exhausted and stuff, but normally they would take away in the second half. But I think considering like, you know, our like young team, like we talked about before, coming up against Rangers who were premiers, we did pretty well. Cass, with the Opens, uh, you actually did make the finals this year. Um, and of course, uh, came very, very close of making the grand final this year. Um, tell us a bit about the season. Yeah, it's um, it's been a bit of a new direction for the Jets Open team. Um, what G didn't mention was our Jets is a regional team. So um, our 20s girls have quite a few challenges that they face in terms of um, finding talent, getting talent to training, um, resourcing and all those sorts of things that I think our city slickers take for granted. Um, but the club made a pretty bold decision this year to mm. relocate our opens team to Perth because, you know, once the girls leave school, most of them come up for uni anyway. Um, so it was kind of a logical step, but at the same time, a very brave one from the committee to change our roots. Um, so with that, we brought in a new coach, Carly Gwarden, and she's just a absolute super coach. Um, she brought in her wing woman in Cherie um, and I've worked under both of them before. So Carly put a bit of a team together, um, really focusing on bringing our Southwest talent through and then mixing it um, with the right characters and the right talent from the Perth pool as well. Um, so we almost started the year as a new team 
Um, but the great thing was we bonded really, really quickly. Um, we set our goals and we set our values. Um, and for us, we wanted to make top four and we wanted to be competitive. So throughout the course of the season, we had plenty of challenges thrown our way, um, but really, really stoked and really proud of the girls that we ended up finishing second. Unfortunately, we didn't show up in finals um, and it's probably probably a bit of a reflection of, um, of experience in those kind of games. Um, but yeah, we're, we're bloody proud of where we ended up and looking to go one more next year. I, was going to I wasn't going to mention that you crashed out of finals in straight sets. No, we crashed uh, but uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I guess the experience, yeah, at least you had a double chance. You had two chances of making it. Um, I guess how much of that is going to be, you know, working towards next year, knowing that now you've had the experience of playing two games in finals at crunch time. Yeah, absolutely. I um I think that coming into the season, you know, we were maybe a little bit written off by our opposition. You know, Jets traditionally hasn't been particularly successful. This was the first time in 23 years that the club has made finals. Um, so I think going into next year, we now know that we can kick it and, um, and other clubs know that too, and we are a threat. Um, but it's just about building um, experience in those precious, precious situations. Um, we had our team review last week. We're doing individual review this week. Um, and I'm sure that through that, we're all going to learn a little bit about um, what we can do to keep improving in that space. But also knowing that, hey, we've, we've had two final series now. Um, next one that comes around isn't a dress rehearsal. It's the real thing. And, you know, we've got to do the work to get there. But I think that we will perform better next time. You mentioned to Jan about how they played against the eventual premiers. Now, obviously, uh, you had a bit of a tougher task uh, against the eventual <laughs> premiers where <laughs> you took on the three-time champions uh, who end up winning again this year in the West Coast Warriors. Um, how did you fare against them throughout the season? Minus the finals. Um, yeah, so minus the fi Warriors definitely got us in the finals. Um, and they are a quality side. And credit to Warriors, they, um, they're... I suppose, star GS from previous years got an opportunity to play netball over in England um, and they still played quality netball. They had bought players for the ranks. So really Warriors deserve credit there. I will say, though, our claim this year was that we were the only team who beat them. Um, right. And for us, that was, yeah, that was one of those kind of games where, you know, I just, I had a smile on my face the whole game. We we had such flow about us, such freedom in our play. It was really just a bloody good game to be a part of. So um, we knew that our best can kick it. And for us, I think it's the consistency to put our best out there for 60 minutes. And that's really the difference, I think, between a non-performing team and a performing team. So, Cass, when you watched the grand final, I know that would have been painful considering you probably your team probably should have got there. Um, and when they won it, um, you know, did it sort of give you a bit of, I guess, um, achievement for the fact that you were the only team to beat them throughout the whole year? And did you almost like almost give them a bit of motivation to win the whole thing considering the only loss was against yourselves? Look, I think that what it was for us is knowing that our best can do it. And look, what I will say as well is Lions, who obviously got to the eventual grand final, um, our best against them was a draw. So the competition was so close and everyone was really able to compete. No game was really a, a sure win or a sure loss. Um, but I think that, you know, that win against Warriors gave the team a lot of belief in our ability and our talent and what we can do when we work together. So, you know, seeing them go on and win, um, it's, yeah, I suppose it's mixed feelings. They are such a quality side. Um, we've proven we can beat them, but at the end of the day, we've got to be able to do it when it counts. And that's what we didn't do. My question to both of you now is, tell us the couple players in your respective teams that had an awesome season. I know, I know it was a team effort, but tell us a couple of players in your team that had an awesome season and you cannot include yourselves. Damn. <laughs> I'll say you G and you say me <laughs> <laughs> deal <laughs> so in our team I'll pick 
one from each area. Um, <laughs> Ella, I'll do it quickly. Ella Eastor, she uh, she was our centre quarter. She came back from a season ending ending injury last year. Played the best centre I've seen a player in our league play for a long time, um, and unfortunately we lost her to an ACL injury. So. Um, that was one kind of moment for us that we really had to band together as a team. But what Ella brings off the court is equally as strong as what she brings on the court. So um, she is a, a standout for me. Um, Brooke Gibbo, Brooke Gibson, our, our GA, she um, actually broke into the Sting squad for the first time this year, which That's is right. I suppose, the next level in the pathway. Um, and again, for me, just watching Gibbo play at her best, um, she's cutting and driving. She's shooting long bombs. It's just makes my role as a wing attack so much fun. So watching Gibbo has been really good. Um, and then anyone watching this one will be no surprise, but Ruthie up in our defense event. Yes. Um, she's obviously Sunday's sister. So we all know Ruthie's on the path to really, really great things. Um, and again, just watching Ruthie at her best is just bloody good to watch. Sometimes I'm in the attacking end. And I have to remind myself I'm playing because I'm too busy watching Ruth <laughs> Dominate. <laughs> Just snap back into the game. <laughs> In our team, the first person that comes straight to mind is Jessie Whitehead, our captain. Um, she's just such a main part in our game. Like, she's the playmaker. She's so positive. She's just always, like, on her game and always supporting everyone. Um, then I would definitely go to Katie Martin. So she's also a shooter. Um, it was her, actually her debut in one or this year and she even got onto the open court, which was really awesome for her. Um, and, you know, like her shooting accuracy is really good. And yeah, she's just such a lovely person. And then also Isabel Legro. She's um, a little centre quarter. She's quite young. I think she's 16, only just got her L's, which is quite impressive. Um, she, you know, she always gets thrown around on the court by bigger body people and stuff but she just never gives up and yeah she's definitely she's got something in her she's great now tell us a bit about your coaches um so our coaches are Myrna and Lisa so I think Lisa is a name that most netball people know she's you know played up there for ages and she's just so talented such a great coach um you know like you just learn something different from her every single training and just having, you know, she's played like a million games. So, you know, she knows what she's talking about. And then we've also got um, Myrna Carboni. She's been in Jets for quite a while now. And honestly, like, she's just, she's also so great. She knows so much what she talks about. Um, our trainings are always so different and intense um, just because like, they know what they're going on about. Like they've been in it for a while. So it's just great having, two really awesome coaches to learn from. We have um, Carly Gwadman. She is, has been coaching for a little while. I actually had her back um, a few years ago at a different one club. Um, and Carl's is a bloody good coach. Um, her philosophy is around developing people and understanding people first and then um, looking to get the best out of them as athletes. Um, and I think anyone who's been coached by Carly just feels something special from her um and she yeah I can't speak highly enough of her and I think if you ask anyone in our team they say the same thing um Carly and Cherie have worked together before so Cherie was our assistant coach um defensive specialist been around for a very long time used to play as well um and really brings um such a compliment to Carly's coaching style and a lot of um really game specific knowledge that helps our defensive end and our defensive end was definitely one of the best in the league when you look at volume of nice. ball picked up mm. yeah um and then we also were so lucky that we had Ingrid Collier so um ex West Coast Fever player yes. join us yep as a um another assistant coach in the midcourt and um Inga's just got, you know, she says so much without saying much at all. Um, and her game knowledge is really fantastic. And her belief in players is really, really strong. So Inga was such a good addition to us. Um, I've got my fingers crossed that we've got her next year as well. Um, so, yeah, we were pretty lucky up in league. Really quality coaches there. Now, Cassie, you're the captain of the of, of the Open team. Now, I was like, John, you're one of the leadership group for... Uh 
uh, players on the on the twenties. Um, what does that role mean to both of you? So for me, I this is my second year of Warno, and when I found out that I was like had been chosen to be part of the leadership team, it was just I was just so like proud and just so happy um, that the girls like trusted me to like to be the person that they come to um, under Jesse and Sophie, of course, and even just to be like a part of the discussion with Jesse and Sophie because they've been in Warno for quite a few years. Like I've just learned so much and I really love like connecting with the girls on a different level because I know that if they do need something, they can come to me and yeah. Um, captain role for me is something that really feels so special. Um, we, yeah, I suppose to be voted in by your peers and um, people see you in that kind of light um, when you want to be seen that way is really important and really special. Um, I'm a little, I bring the average age of the group up is how I put it. So <laughs> I, I know that for me, you know, when I, when I put my jet stress on, I feel so much pride um, to be playing with the girls and to be leading the girls. I must say, though, they make it really, really easy. We've got such a great group. Um, our next group of leaders um, take ownership. They take the court. Um, they lead by example. So it's a very easy role, but one that I'm very, very proud of. Um, how did both of you get involved in netball and why did you choose it? Um, I Well, my family is basically every other sport except netball. So I don't really know where it came from, but um, <laughs> I think in year three, um, we had some friends that played and it was for a little team called Purple Jets. And so I just, you know, chucked a purple shirt on and went and joined in, um, which it was great. You know, I've been a defender since the start and yeah, just going up through it. I never really thought that I'd be playing one or to be honest. I didn't think it was going to go that far, but last year um, was my second season of footy netty. And that was just, that's where it started that I just decided I really want to go for it and like get as far as I can. So yeah, thanks to Purple Jets for <laughs> getting this started. I started, it was just what school sport had. I think I was in year three and played netter. Um, I watch some of the little netball now and I think, I don't know how my parents did it because it's so <laughs> I suppose it's cute when you're it's your own kid. But. <laughs> um, yeah. um, I didn't go through the traditional talent program. I wasn't overly talented. Um, I suppose I'm just a bit of a um, bit of a hard worker, and um, eventually got into one all. Uh, when I was 21, it was my third attempt to get in, and I think the coach just thought. She's having such a crack, so we'll see what she can do. Um, and I played for about four years, won a couple of premierships um, with Warriors under Carly, um, took a bit of time off. And then uh, obviously this year had a bit of a chat with Carly and decided that we wanted to have another go again. And here we are. Obviously, John mentioned that she's gone from Purple Jets to the Blue Jets, technically. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Did, did you ever thought, so I've got a really, I know that was a really sassy comment I just mentioned, uh, but, <laughs> but uh, did you ever thought you went, you went from, you know, being in the junior club there of the Purple Jets to all of a sudden now you're in uh, <laughs> the, one, of the uh, one of the premier clubs in the WA National, uh, uh, in the Netball League competition, playing for the other Jets? <laughs> yeah I definitely if you asked me back then I definitely wouldn't have guessed it um but yeah I'm just happy that I am really. Jess you mentioned before that you've uh, actually have been involved with the defending champions um the Warriors uh when they've won their premierships and you're obviously part of a couple of those I guess how difficult was it originally to play against your former team? Um, it was, I, I suppose the decision to finish playing was quite a tough one a few years ago. Um, I sort of got to the point where I wasn't loving playing, but I, I wanted to love to play, if that make, makes sense. Um, and to give it up was quite a tough decision. And I did so with the intention of going back. Um, so... I suppose by the time I came back, a lot of the girls that I'd been playing with had moved on, but a few of the key players were still there. Um, I think I just, I think I'm probably at a bit of an older age where um, 
that aspect of the game is less important to me. I'm more focused on the girls that I'm playing with. Um, so whilst I, you know, you don't like playing against your old club, I don't think anyone does, but um, I really just look to the group that I'm playing with and looking at all the, the benefits and, um, and what that brings and how much I love the group that I'm with. And then whatever opposition it is, is the opposition and who it is on the day. Now, both you mentioned right at the start, what position both you play on the court. If you had a preferred position, we'd love to convince your coaches to put you next year. Where would that be? <laughs> Honestly, I think it would be so awesome to be a shooter. Like, it's just so exciting. Imagine, like, getting the points on the board, you know. But also then I think about it and just a bit too much pressure for me, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, imagine a draw in the grand final or something. I don't think I could deal with that. So, yeah, I don't know how they do it, but it's very impressive. So I would like to be a shooter. It's GA, and I tell Carly every week. Yeah, like, <laughs> she's never given me a gift. <laughs> so you're almost there, Cass. You you were you were at wing attack. You were close. Yeah, about wing attack. I started in juniors as a goalkeeper, so I'm slowly getting there. Oh. Ah, <laughs> so Gian, here's your chance. You 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 don't eventually get down the other end of the court. That's right. <laughs> Now, what does the sport of netball mean to both you and especially being at, at the Southwest uh, Jets? Being at Southwest Jets is, oh, it means so much to me because coming from down south, well, you know, when all the other girls and the state teams and stuff are up in Perth, it's, we're just so thankful to have the opportunity for us girls down here, like to, you know, be able to come through and play at the league that all the Perth girls are playing. Um, to have, yeah, just like I said, the opportunity. Um, I love playing netball so much. It means so much to me. The girls, like, making, building family, basically, um, on the court and off the court. I've made some great friends this year, like, from not knowing who they were at trials to now, like, almost like, you know, best friends and stuff. It's it's just great, such a great sport to meet new people. Yeah, I... Um... I love the friendship aspect and I've got a lot of lifelong friends um, from various teams over the years and ones that will be in my life for a very long time. Um, I love the competitive aspect. You know, I love going to training and working really hard and um, striving to be better and striving to do better. Um, but doing that in a team environment, I feel is so much more rewarding than individual sport for me anyway. Um, and then playing for Southwest Jets, I cannot commend the club um, well enough for how they have integrated us now as a Perth-based team. So, you know, when we have our home games, we get, you know, sort of four to five every year. Um, the Southwest community shows us so much support, um, so much love. We've got our beautiful little cheerleaders who are always down at our games, um, really just making us feel so welcome and so part of the community, um, I think is something special and something that isn't so inherent in the Perth teams. So playing for, for Jets as a country team actually brings a little bit more fulfilment for me with what we can give back to the community. What would be your advice to people, especially in the country areas, that hopefully they'll be able to get the opportunity to play in this amazing competition, especially for the Jets? Every opportunity you get, you, like, you've got to take it. Um, it's so important because they're, like we get a lot of opportunities, but not as many as Perth girls because it's just, it's just a completely different um experience for them and for us um so doing the hard work behind the scenes as well you know you've got it you've got to make it happen it's not anyone else's job you need to put the hard yarns in when no one is looking I think from my experience it's if you really really want to you know get into the one-all environment set yourself that goal and um do all the little things to give you the best opportunity and know that there's probably going to be things that come that challenge you um, you know, you might be turned away. You might not get in the first time you try. You might not get in the second time you try. But um, that persistence and willingness to take on feedback and go again, I think, does get rewarded. Um, so, yeah, just persistence and keep at it and do all the little things well. Do either of you have any future ambitions in the sport of netball? Um, my ambition is such is just to get as far as I can, whether, you know, that's just a state team or it's a sting team or, you know, I just want to push myself as far as I can go. Yeah, I just want to play my absolute best, Nettie, and play with some good people. 
like uh, can we mention about footy netball um, a moment ago at the start? Uh, might have been you, Gio, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah that was me. Um, are you? Well, I guess this question's basically for both of you. Uh, both of you still involved in football netball, and if so, um, you must well give your football netball club a shout out. <laughs> um, so I didn't actually play this year, but. Last year, I played for Eaton Boomers, um, who I think are in the finals this year, which is great. But um, yeah, because last year, I only got a few games because of COVID and everything going on with netball. It was just a bit too hard. So I decided to take a step back this year. But I miss it. <laughs> um, I still play club netball, um, Sorrento Saints Netball Club up at Wanneroo Districts. And we've got our first final today. So go Saints. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, uh, so another finals campaign for you, Cass. Another finals campaign. Love it. <laughs> Firstly, who had the most embarrassing moment on the court this season and what was it? We were actually talking about this earlier, my team and I, and um, we decided on Ella Griffin, um, who is a mid-quarter. I think about just her in general. No, I'm just kidding. Um, in... <laughs> Every game, I swear, she fell over. Like, she sent me a whole bunch of screen recordings from the centre pass matches of just her face planting over her own feet, over other players. Like, and then there was one of them where she just laid there in the end and just kind of gave up. And it was just, it was definitely Ella. Yeah, just her falling over. <laughs> I think I can think of two for us. One, um, Simone, our goal shooter got absolutely taken out by another team goalkeeper, um, ended up on the floor, like, <laughs> like, and Simone got the contact call, which we all couldn't believe in. Um, but then I reckon even worse than that is when your own teammate takes you out. And um, I think it was our final against Raw. And um, uh-huh. Gibbo, I was obviously in Gibbo's way. And uh-huh. she's just like, flattened me. And I've looked yeah. up to be like, who the hell has hit me? And it was Gibbo. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was that was on the live stream. So yes, we definitely. That was, yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. uh, which, uh, anyone can watch that back as well. By the way, Who's the comedian, the best singer, and the best dancer on the team. Comedian, definitely Devon. She is probably one of the funniest people I've ever met, and she can you know put you in a good mood no matter how tired or upset you are. Um, best dancer, Abby Westra. Definitely. She's got amazing moves. It's so impressive in the change rooms before games and stuff. Um, and then singers would probably be Jesse and Sophie, but they come as a pair. You don't really get one of them by themselves. They're always oh. singing together. <laughs> For us, comedian's got to be Brookie Walker. She uh, just comes out with some sassy comments. Closely followed by Ruth. Ruth, when you get her going, is <laughs> Must be a defender's thing. <laughs> um, singer, I usually carpool with Simone, and Simone likes to have a little thingy in the car. So she's actually got a nice singing voice, unlike me. I'm terrible. So I'm going to switch in for singing. And then dancer, I'm going to say Ella Eastor just because she cuts shapes on court. <laughs> <laughs> It's what I try to do, but I don't do it so successfully. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Uh, So is anyone on your respective teams, this is, I think this is more towards the under 20s, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, Is anyone on your teams into their TikToks? Oh man. Yeah. Abby Westra. (laughs) Yeah. Like, we'll have a little video camera set up and when we're kind of like pumping ourselves up for pre-games they'll sometimes be doing TikToks and dancing and I can't dance for anything but I'll try like <laughs> off in the corner but it just it just doesn't work I don't TikTok <laughs> <laughs> I think Riley has it I think Riley and maybe Elisa TikTokers I could get in a lot of trouble for saying that if I'm wrong <laughs> <laughs> I've just thrown them under the bus <laughs> so out of the, uh, the names that you mentioned is any of the tiktok dance um are now tiktok famous no i don't think they're that good <laughs> <laughs> it's 
stick to netball you reckon Jay? yeah oh, definitely <laughs> it's good entertainment though in the warm-up do either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual yeah i i have a weird thing about my shoelaces um I tie them at least three times before each game, like undo them and tie them up again. I, I think it's started with me being stressed out that they're not tied enough. And then now like I'll do it once when I put them on, another time in the warm up, another time just before the warm up, another time after. Yeah, it's just my shoelaces. I like them to be tight. <laughs> Such a random thing, but yeah. <laughs> I like to moisturize my legs like just before we play. <laughs> <laughs> because it makes no sense why I would do that, but that's what I like to do. <laughs> so as but, in like in the warm-up or in the change rooms? In the change room, it's got to be after you've taped or your tape doesn't stick. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I just like to have... <laughs> Man, I weird. thought shoelaces was weird. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. exactly what I thought. <laughs> 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 oh, I've never had any of those answers. Um, <laughs> uh, now, does the, does the team have a pre-game song to hype a team up before a game? And if so, who runs that playlist? Um, we have a playlist, but our song is um, S&M by Rihanna. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just it's just our hype song and we'll just be in like a little dance circle we were actually late to one of our warm-ups once because we were dancing and screaming s and by Rihanna so yeah <laughs> we a, um, a Jets 21 playlist on Spotify with some bangers you can go find it if you want to <laughs> um, but we always do a pre-game game so um, we might play like the heads up on the phone like charades Oh, okay. Sometimes we'll do, obviously, without alcohol, we'll do slap cup. <laughs> well, honestly, everyone gets so competitive and then we're ready for a game. It's so good. That's really smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a few good ones we have. Um, so that's what we do. That's our pump up the jam. Two final ones for I let both of you go. The, the first one is Did the team have a fine system? And if so, who caught the most fines? Oh, we didn't actually have a fine system this year. Oh, that's a good idea for next year, though. I'll bring it up. Oh. <laughs> we definitely did. Um, fines were <laughs> out at Philly Saturday, and Simone is our fines master. I don't think we got the most, but Carly got a few. Um, Ingrid also got one. This is the best fine ever because her car <laughs> broke down and she had to scoot to training. And even though it was so committed, we could <laughs> find <laughs> That is amazing. It's on social media. So Ingrid won't know I've told everyone this. <laughs> oh, she will now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Any good nicknames in the team we should know about? Oh, yeah, I've got a really good one. Um, I'm probably not meant to say this, but Sophie Stratford actually let it slip once at training that we call our coach Myrna Myrny Piece. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but um, that's like the main one. So yeah, Moni piece, and then yeah. How did Myrna take that one? I think she loves it. Honestly, she yeah. didn't <laughs> seem like she loved it, but yeah. secretly, she secretly loves it. <laughs> um, no crazy nicknames for us, but we've got two. Uh, we've got three Brooks, so they've all got to be yeah, Repa, Gibbo, and Brook, Brookie. Um, yeah. And Elise and an Ella, so we've got to get that right. Apart from yeah, that, ours is the same as well. We've got two Abbeys, but I'm definitely not going to ask how how the coach got that nickname uh, either. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't actually know how it came along, but <laughs> it just did. It just works. Affection, G. <laughs> yeah, yeah, love, yeah. Well, both of you, thank you so much for giving up your time to join us. It's awesome having both of <laughs> you on the show. Uh, this is one of the most funniest one we've had over in WA through for all the sports we've done um, so far <laughs> this year. And um, best of luck going into 2022. Hopefully for the Opens that you can at least uh, go one step further, make the grand final and hopefully knock off the Warriors. And obviously for the for the 20th, so hopefully uh, you can crack into the finals uh, in 2022. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you so much for having us. 
Awesome. Thanks, Will. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. No, no worries. And that's uh, Cathy Dion there joins us from the uh, ECU uh, Southwest the Jets netball team. Of course, if you want to support them uh, in 2022, of course, we'll, we'll put all the details up on how you can support the team uh, in all kinds of ways. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away here on the 10th year celebration. <laughs>